Hey, what's up everybody, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about and discussing the Yamaha R7. By the end of this video, I will tell you whether or not this motorcycle right here is going to end up being a good buy, or if you should be saying goodbye. Before we get started, I want to give a big thank you to who made this video possible, and that is going to be Big St. Charles Motorsports. Big St. Charles Motorsports is one of the largest power sports dealers in the state of Missouri, especially out here in the St. Louis area. You can visit them online at their website at BigStCharlesMotorsports.com, or you can give them a phone call at 636-946-6487. They carry all the big brands like Yamaha, Kawasaki, Suzuki, Honda, KTM, Gas Gas, and so much more. So be sure to check them out. Omnimoto and Big St. Charles Motorsports are not affiliated in any other capacity outside of these test ride reviews. So if I say something stupid, don't blame them. If you enjoy this content, please consider hitting that subscribe button and drop a like on this video. We're going to do a few things with this motorcycle today. First off, we're going to go through some specs, and then we're going to talk about some features, and then I'm going to get you guys an exhaust clip, and then I'll take you for a test ride. So let's stop standing around and talking, and let's get into it. Let's start with some specs first. Starting with a suspension up in the front, it uses a 41mm KYB fully adjustable inverted fork. The brakes in the front are a dual disc 320mm radial setup. And in the rear, you will find a singular disc that is 245 millimeters, and that is pinched between a single piston Nissan caliper. Rear suspension is a monoshock setup that is also fully adjustable as well. The heart of the beast is hidden behind the fairings, but it is a 689cc dual overhead cam liquid cooled parallel twin engine with a 270 degree crank, meaning that it sounds pretty incredible. It peaks at about 74 horsepower and makes a very respectable 50 foot pounds of torque. And that engine is mated into Yamaha's six speed gearbox using a slipper and assist clutch. Curb weight or wet weight on this motorcycle comes in at 414 pounds. And on paper, that figure may sound a little bit heavy, but I promise that is nothing compared to yo mama. Uh, this motorcycle is fairly tall at 32.9 inches. For reference, I'm about six foot one. I've got a 33 inch inseam, and this is how I fit up on the motorcycle. At a stop, my feet are firmly planted on the ground very comfortably. Once I mount the motorcycle and I'm riding it, however, my feet are pretty far behind me with these rear set pegs and the clip on style handlebars definitely pull you forward over the tank. Now let's talk features. So you heard me talk about the radially mounted brake calipers in the front. I really like that feature. I prefer radial over axial. And from a performance standpoint, this really is the setup that you want. So it's nice to see Yamaha bringing that to this bike. This detail is pretty important, but pretty easy to look over. They beveled the tank out specifically so you can lay the chin of your helmet down in here to get as far behind this windscreen as possible. I think that is a pretty smart design. And uh, yeah, Yamaha is not the only one doing this, but I like that they carried it over to what's supposed to be a modern day super sport motorcycle. The front end on the bike is all LED. I really love the way the R7 looks. Uh, and interestingly enough, it's actually slimmer than the R3 in terms of profile width. It's the thinnest R model in the Yamaha lineup. And you can also see those accent lights up front. I really enjoy how manufacturers are making like a continuous beam of light rather than singular LEDs that comprise the lens. I think this is a really clean look and it accentuates the front end of the R7 so incredibly well. And since this is a pre-owned bike, there are a couple of aftermarket accessories on here, but we'll talk about those in a second. The tail tidy is one of them. You can see the blinkers right there. Love the tail light on the R models as well. And I think it's so cool that they have like a little duct you can see through right here. It's just a little bit more aerodynamic design, I would presume, and it doesn't look half bad either. Nothing super crazy about the Yamaha buttons on here. They're just your standard Yamaha switch controls with a couple other buttons mixed in the middle here. Clicks all feel really good, and Yamaha does, you know, pretty pretty decent controls in my opinion. Their, their switch gears are usually likable. Nothing super fancy about them, but they get the job done. I'll call this Dash okay it does its job um nothing super fancy about it just a standard backlit lcd you have some pretty decent readouts on here like the ambient air temperature engine air temperature average miles per gallon instant miles per gallon trip two trip one odometer yeah just the standard stuff fuel levels over there sweeping rpm tachometer along the top gear position indicator and then your miles per hour indicated right there in the middle other mods this rider has done include a set of frame sliders, GB racing engine protectors, savers, whatever you want to call them. 
passenger peg block off plates from Savage. Master cylinder has some sort of protective cover over it, as you can see right here. And then this tail tidy out back. I don't know the name of the tail tidy, but I'll throw it on the screen right here, and you guys can probably use the link in the description to order that exact tail tidy if you really fancy it. The previous owner also added the axle spools, so in the event of a layover, this is going to help save a lot of your crucial components here in your suspension. And he has a similar setup back here with the rear axle sliders to help preserve your swing arm. And then there's a set of axle spools, so if you have a paddock stand, you can get this bike up off the tire and perform some maintenance that you might need to do. I do like the tank grips. This was a nice touch. I forgot to point that out a second ago. But... And then I think the last thing that I can really show off as far as features go is a radially mounted front brake master cylinder setup. Really happy to see that they brought that over to this motorcycle. If they were going to make a Super Sport based on the MT-07 chassis, what they had to do to it was upgrade the suspension and the brake system, and I think those were two boxes that they checked off. Uh, so for that, Yamaha, we thank you. But now that all that is out of the way, let's get into an exhaust clip, yeah? Alright, and now that we're through that, let us commence the test ride portion of this video. Hi, hello, welcome to the test ride segment of this video. As we've done in the last three videos, we're going to play around in the Big St. Charles Motorsports parking lot first. And this is actually Big St. Charles Harley Davidson. They do sell the HD brand as well, if you're interested in that big boy cruiser life. But basically, I'm just getting the feel for the motorcycle. This is not a brand new motorcycle, so we don't really have to scrub things in as much as a brand new one, as I like to do. But it's still nice to get yourself familiar with the bike, understand how it behaves, and the uh, feedback it gives whenever you do certain inputs, like grabbing the lever and squeezing it. Oh man, those brakes feel so much better than the MT-07. Sheesh. I mean, night and day, dude. Wow. The MT-07 brakes are not exactly confidence-inspiring. Oh, but that, that is good. Okay, let's, uh, let's do a turning exercise that we've done prior. So basically, it's just a two parking space turn. We're going to start on this white line. And we're not going to turn in before this white line, but the next white line. It's going to be super easy because this wheelbase is short, and this is a very sharp handling motorcycle. Here we go. Let's get everything set. You're going to drag the back brake to accomplish this task a little bit easier. We're going to stay in the friction zone, and we're going to be very, very gentle on the throttle. Here we go. Boom. Every single time. Uh, the rest of the bike at low speed, it's very lightweight, easy to maneuver. You do have to kind of get used to clip-ons. I have been riding uh, cruisers lately for my test ride videos, and I traditionally ride upright naked motorcycles for my personal vehicles, so this is a bit of a different flavor than what I'm used to. But we're going to see how we fare and um, see what it's all about. I can already tell I'm not as comfortable as I would be on this motorcycle's naked counterpart, the MT-07, but we're not going to let that stop us from having a good time with it. It does really force you into an athletic stance, but I kind of appreciate that, especially for a super sport motorcycle that's kind of what it's supposed to do, so that's not a bad thing. Clutch is light enough that you can use one finger to operate it, even with a stock lever. And that shifter, wow! Man, I don't remember my MT-07 being that smooth. Holy smokes. Phew, man, I've been on this thing for like five minutes and at six foot, I am not 100% comfortable. I'm comfortable on the bike, but in terms of like ergonomics, I am not used to this seating position. But it's not bad. I just, uh, I can already tell that for commuting purposes, this is not ideal, but I suppose the bars forcing you forward into the windscreen and kind of in this little wind tunnel here, would be beneficial for commuting, not getting blasted by wind the whole time, but you sacrifice comfort for wind protection. I don't know. It's, it's, it's not really a, a, a good trade-off in my opinion, but that's just me. I'm allowed to have my opinion and you're allowed to think that it's wrong. Second gear, 35. <laughs> it picks the front tire up a little bit. Slipper clutch is pretty handy. Here we go. Let's lean the bike over. 
Dang, dude, that's actually, hmm. I'm not, you know, the most professional rider, but I think this bike would be a lot of fun at a track. I've never been to a track, but just leaning it over right there at that stoplight, that was pretty nice. The seat definitely forces you into the tank. Like, I, I am riding this tank with my crotch right now. Hence, crotch rocket. So yeah, the seat does force you into the tank, but once you uh, scoot your ass back a little bit, you can really get tucked and get that full streamlined effect. And even my forearms are down under the tank, kinda, helping me be more aerodynamic. So that's, uh, that's, that's good design. I think this bike is designed very well for what it is. And so many people that ask about this bike ask about the R6 right beforehand, and they're like, oh, that must be the replacement to the R6. No. 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 You could not be more wrong. This bike was never meant or intended to replace the R6. What I think this bike was meant to do was race in the Twins Cup. And the R6 is still produced, you just can't buy one street legal from a dealership. It's fully tracked out, no headlights, taillights, blinkers, nothing. Anything that is necessary for the track is on there. If it was necessary for the street, it came off. Whenever you ask the R7 to give you power, it does a very excellent job of doing that in the low to mid-range RPMs. The engine kind of peters off up at the top, but that's to be expected from a parallel twin engine. This bike is just really smooth. I mean, overall, it is so stinking smooth. Didn't even put her foot down. Oh my gosh, it's so smooth, dude. I don't remember, I had an MT-07 at one point and I do not remember it being this buttery smooth. It is a little vibrating though. Again though, that's an inline twin cylinder thing. Here we go, kick the tire over. Yeah, the mid-range pull, really, really strong. But once you get up, you know, past 8,000 RPM, you do feel it falling a little bit flat. Which, to the novice or intermediate rider who has only had a handful of other motorcycles prior to an R7, you know, if you were going to buy one of these, I don't think you'll notice that. And you'll be really, really happy with everything else this bike offers, so long as you are expecting to be a little bit cramped and forced into a sport position. Go figure, it is a sport motorcycle. I'm really finding myself wanting to sit up a lot though because my back, oh my gosh, man. I probably sound like such a baby because I keep bringing it up, but I am, I'm not built for this bike. If I had to go on a track and like actually put it to use in a real world racing scenario, you probably wouldn't notice it because you would just be so dead focused on racing and winning. But just riding around, nah. Not to crush your hopes and dreams or anything. And I cannot believe I'm about to say this, but the Ninja 650 is far and away the better everyday motorcycle. Now when it comes to being exciting and you know leading its class in specifications, the Ninja 650 does not do that. The R7 does that. And that's probably why it is a little bit more expensive. Pat, don't you do it. Come on. Come on. Yeah, wave your hand around. Why are you even getting over? Gosh, dude, you don't even know where you're going. I'm having a good time with this bike. I'm enjoying myself. It's balanced really well. It's not very comfortable, but some of you can probably look past that and maybe you don't want the same things that I do in a motorcycle. Hey, yep. Now we're doing a highway test. Oh shoot, I didn't do a zero to 60. I'll peel off at the next exit and do a zero to 60. What is this guy doing? Get away from me. That's, that's fast enough. It had more left to go. I think we probably could have hit 125, 130, but we're not here to do a top speed run. Bike feels really confident on the interstate. I'm going 75 miles per hour. If I want to make a pass, drop down to fourth, ramp it up to 90, hit fifth, hit 100. 
death. You can commute on this motorcycle, no problem. Just don't expect earth shattering speed. All right, now is the portion where we do a zero to 60 test. This is gonna be pretty straightforward. I'm gonna do my best to get this thing from zero to 60 as quickly as possible. Three, two, one. 60. Probably could have been launched better by a professional, but I think I did okay. miles per hour not too shabby out of the old r7 so it looks like 130 miles per hour is probably our top speed i do feel like this channel right here is throwing a lot of wind at my face or like my shoulder area i don't know could just be my dimensions as a rider causing that Spike is really fun to throw into a turn though. I'm having a great time on this on-ramp. And the R7 is a lot of fun to ride. I'm having a great time. And what I said earlier seems to be pretty true. When you're riding it and you're actually using it for its intended purpose, the thought of discomfort and like the ergonomics kind of bunching you up disappears because you're enjoying the bike and using it for its intended purpose. If you're buying this bike and you live in a very dense city without any really twisty roads, or you're not commuting at least a little bit, I, I don't know if the R7 is for you. But we will reserve that for whenever we get back to the wonderful world that is Big St. Charles Motorsports. I'm also noticing that I'm turning a lot of heads with this thing. So if you're a bit of a, an attention whore, R7 might be for you. Also, I just found neutral so, so easily. This gearbox is beautiful, honestly. Factory shifter feels really good. Clicking through the gears, I mean, that just feels so stinking good. Oh, 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 oh! Whew! Successfully navigated that obstacle. Heads up riding, ladies and gents. All right, all right, all right. We have got some verdicts to lay out for the Yamaha R7. I'm just gonna squeeze on by all of you here. Excuse me. Oh, all right, let's cut to the chase. Let's talk about the pros first. Pros, excellent handling. Very, very reasonable for an intermediate or semi-beginner rider to hop on and entertain themselves for a really long time. I think this bike has a ton of room to grow with and everything is done on it really, really well to give you that confidence you need to really master the art of what the R7 provides in the motorcycling world. I didn't think I was gonna enjoy it this much because again, I usually don't have the seating position on my personal motorcycles, but I can really appreciate where this fits in to the world of sport and super sport racing riding style. It's got excellent torque. The gearbox, I, I can't speak highly enough about that gearbox. I don't know if they've done anything different with the R7 from the MT-07, but I don't remember my gearbox feeling that good on my MT-07. The R7 gearbox, muy bueno. Also, top speed. This is not the slowest bike in the world. It's got pretty good acceleration off the line. Uh, and, and you know, those top end RPMs peter off a little bit, but power delivery overall is very linear, predictable, and enjoyable. And once you get an exhaust on these bikes, they sound fantastic. That is one of the biggest positives to this engine. It just sounds so darn good and so freaking aggressive. I love them. Check out this sound clip. and it looks pretty stinking good just sitting here on this concrete pad. So big ups for me in all of those categories. All of those reasons I say this is a good buy.
Now the negatives. Seating position is definitely not for anybody who may have uh, mobility issues or maybe some issues with their back. If, if you're expecting to get on this bike and be comfortable after 30 minutes of riding, you are sadly mistaken, my friend. Also, if you just want like incredible horsepower pull, this bike just doesn't have that. It's only 74 horsepower out of the box with that little parallel twin engine. If you want high horsepower, you need to be looking at an inline four cylinder like a CBR600 a Kawasaki Ninja ZX6R or Suzuki GSX-R600. So horsepower, not really all that high. Decent, but not great. So aside from that, I really don't think there's much else wrong with the R7 in my opinion. So for those reasons, I say good luck. <laughs> But it's not always up to me. Again, it's just an opinion. I can have that and you can disagree. So if you do disagree, please drop a comment below and tell me what you think about the Yamaha R7 and where it fits in for you. Now that all that's out of the way, let's go ahead and kick it to the outro and wrap this video up. Hello everybody, welcome to the end of the video. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end. I really hope that you enjoyed that video that you just watched. Be sure to check out BigStCharlesMotorsports.com. It would not be possible without the help of Big St. Charles Motorsports to make these videos, so make sure you guys check them out online, www.BigStCharlesMotorsports.com. I also wanted to mention that I am now an official RevZilla affiliate partner. So if you guys liked any of the accessories, modifications, or add-ons that this R7 had in my video, you can help me out and help yourself out by using my code at www.revzilla.com. Be sure to check that out. That's all I've got. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week. Please be kind and ride safe.